Welcome Welcome. to another episode of Chairside Gaming. (laughs) (laughs) Alrighty. So, now I I lost my entire (laughs) trailer. That's my co-host, Ricky. Hi. Um, So, in lieu of the intro, because... um, Hold on, let me see. I remember. Uh, Chairside Gaming. Uh, yeah, no, it, it escaped me, Ricky. You see what happens? We can't. This is why we cannot have nice things, Ricky. Hi. <laughs> sure. uh, I am doing fabuloso. No, uh, no. uh, uh, I am gonna try this for the first time. What, what are you trying for the first time, Ricky? I am trying Brohola! That's right, everybody. We're recording once again another uh, quarantined episode. That's where I was headed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're recording another quarantined episode. This week we're playing Brawlhalla. Um, Brawlhalla is a free-to-play game. Don't ask me to develop her. I totally forgot. I probably should look it up. Um, but we're playing Brawlhalla. Um, and just kind of chilling out because it's a, it's a fun game. I don't know why it's being so loud right now on my end. Hold on, let me lower. All right, cool. <clears throat> so, yeah, if you guys haven't checked out Brahalla, go check it out. It's a free-to-play game, so you really can't lose. Yep. Um, Yo, yeah, again, my so honest opinion, since this is going to be my first time playing, don't know what the heck I'm doing, so enjoy. Well, you're, you're getting your butt whooped. That's going to be for sure. Um, but it's okay, because what you do and Chris is Chris is trying to hit me, rude ass. I'm trying to hit everybody, dude. I am... If you're near me, I'm going for you. Like that that's basically my rule of thumb. Um so yeah, and like I was trying to tell you, Ricky, as we were like practicing, what you want to do is you want to do combos, man. Like that's what I don't that's know, where combos. Well, you don't even need to know them. Oh well. I want McDonald's, I want a combo meal. <laughs> well I'm I'm okay without McDonald's. Dude, I went to McDonald's the other day. It was fucking amazing. Was it? Yes. I'm dead. Oh, come on. No, 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 no. All right. So I, I, yeah, I haven't really gone anywhere. It's, I, I quarantine. I have been massively quarantined. It's, it, it's, yeah, it's fun. I've, I've literally gone out of the house three or four times. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, no, it's. No. Yeah. Yay. Um, I mean, we're not really going out. Like, I'll go out to, um, do groceries and whatnot like now we're starting to feel a little comfortable going to see some family members not everybody um but yeah yeah i know the feeling it's just uh i don't know man it's just <laughs> cc was joking around because cc went back to work and apparently they have a hashtag at her workplace called what is it hashtag new normal or something like that yeah. oh so she's like back in the office well, not back in the office. I should probably be paying attention. I'm getting my butt whooped from looking around. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, she's she's working from home again. But oh, okay. You know, so that that's that's the plus. But then of course it's it's the balancing act. Uh, so we're we're getting used to that one now. But uh, it, I don't know. It's been an interesting week so far. We'll we'll see how it goes. Ah! Go to work from home. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, work from home does not get easier. At the very least, you know what has been kind of cool, though? What? We got some really cool announcements that I've been dying to talk to you about, dude. Okay. And so, like, all right, so it got announced. Uh, I'm sure you saw, it, mainly because we've had this conversation before recording. Uh, <laughs> Tony Hawk got announced. Um, they're basically remastered the first and the second games, and they're putting it out. Um... How do you, like, initial thought, how do you feel about that? I own it. Do for you? The, oh, for the original PlayStation. Oh, my God, for real? Yeah. Oh, I've... my God. You know we're going to have to do comparison. Right? <laughs> That's fine. But, yes, I actually own Tony Hawk uh, Pro Skate. I can't remember if it's the first one or the second one. Um, ah, I would on, Honestly, I would yeah. have to take a look. But, yeah, I own it. It's fun. Um, it's going to definitely bring some good old nostalgia back what i'm in third place yeah yeah what? not bad chris got fourth place yeah i did terrible in this one <laughs> um no but yeah it's 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 fun i'm gonna be excited to go into the warehouse the school district um i wonder if the one bull location is gonna be back 
Dude, I think they're going to do pretty much everything that they had in the original game. They've pretty much confirmed it. I'm very excited about it. <clears throat> like, again, I told you this as, as before we started recording. I talked myself into buying this game as I was <laughs> writing um, the episode. <clears throat> like, I'm sitting there and I'm, and I'm doing the research. And I, I've I known about the game and I knew all the things that they were announcing. But <clears throat> as I started digging into it deeper, like... It really looks friggin' awesome. First of all, like the price is not bad at all. I, I was looking at the pre-order, which if you pre-order, you're able to play the uh, the infamous um, warehouse warehouse level. So I know like it's that. so fun. And the cool thing is that like, that was the that was the same level that they gave us a demo for that game, and it was part of the disc for like um, what was that magazine? I can't remember what magazine I got it from right now. But I know I received it as a demo game from like PlayStation Magazine or whatever, and that's how I played that game, and that's how I got into Tony Hawk. I'm oh, really? Done, but, oh heck yeah, man! It was. Um, I wish I could remember the name of the magazine, but you know, magazines are dead. Um, <laughs> dude, it's been a long time, but it's uh, being remade by Vicarious Visions, which is the same studio that did the Insane Trilogy, and I want to say they did Spyro as well. I can't don't don't quote me on the Spyro one, but I want to say that they did that too. Uh, honestly, I don't remember, but maybe. I mean, I know that there's a company out there making all this fabulous remakes from back in the day. And have um, you seen what it like? It looks awesome. Like the oh, it does. They really did a. I saw the video where they did a mini comparison. From the old style to the new, st- Jesus Christ! I keep falling off. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, is- from the old game to the new game, and you, oh my God, the quality is so much better. And they're basically, oh man, All right. so like they're there. <laughs> I keep losing. Uh, the <laughs> music and stuff, so that's pretty cool. The biggest thing, like everybody knows Tony Hawk and the game because of the music. They're added. They're pretty much making sure that all the music is on there. There's going to be a few exceptions, but here's like the cool thing. I they're wonder what new ones they're going to add. Yeah, because you don't like the type of music that you would think of from a soundtrack for one of the Tony Hawk um, games is not something like that. You know, kind of plays too much today. Because I would yeah. think more, it would be more of the punk ska type, but like you don't see that in mainstream as much as it, I feel like it was back then. So I wouldn't even I wouldn't even be able to venture a guess. But then again, like you know, I was all into metal, and I still can't I can't name you any like five new metal bands. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I just I, I hear random music here and there, but you know we're selling we're not we're not plugged in like the young kids anymore, Ricky. <laughs> Not in the music anyway, but um, it would be really interesting. I am I'm very much looking forward to it. It's like I said, I talked myself into it. I, <laughs> I was like, I mean, I'll yeah, definitely probably get it just because I want to have you know the old and the new. I I'm definitely gonna get it. I mean, for forty dollars, it's not bad at all. And like I said, the digital edition uh, or the digital, what just happened? Oh man. I was so clo- no, What? No. Is that me? Holy shit. Did you win? Yeah. <laughs> what? Piggy Gamer Dad right there, guys. You know, follow me, subscribe. You also have this yeah. sin right there, number two. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I kept looking away and dying. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you know what I didn't think of that like, I find hilarious? What? That the originals didn't even have, they didn't have the analog sticks, and that's actually like gonna be a thing. And I'm sitting here, they're talking about how they they worked for the orig- with the original code because they wanted like muscle memory to be a thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm here thinking like I don't even remember playing it on really on bad. Yeah, dude. Dude, like, you, you just need to come over then. Obviously, we did, but I just I just do not. I just don't remember navigating that way for some reason. Like, and I guess it's because I, in all honesty, I, I got the majority of the Tony Hawk games as they were coming out. So I, I did eventually play the ones that like had stick configuration to them, and and I did get some on the uh, N64. I got the N64 version, so you know, okay. that, I think that one might have been. Gotcha. Well, yeah, something along the lines. 
But I know I played the N64 version, so I had like the experience with the paddles. So I can't remember playing it with the sticks. So like, I'm sorry, playing it with the um, D-pad. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Uh, so I am curious what mode, you know, I'm gonna end up liking best. Because if they're talking about the muscle memory, I'm, I'm wondering, do I still have that muscle memory tucked away? I might, would I be able to actually play it um, to the way that I used to and remember what I used to do? Or, you know, what is the learning curve going to be? I mean, so, it's. I don't really, I don't remember the game being that difficult. I mean, I haven't played it, to be honest, uh, since last year. Um, and while I was playing it, I did use the D-pad because the original um, PlayStation controllers did not have the analog sticks. No. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it wasn't crazy for the most part. When I went back into it, I was able to remember a lot of the moves that I used to use back in the day, especially with um, Officer Dick. <clears throat> <laughs> I really wonder if they're gonna bring Officer Dick back. I don't Dude, remember they, seeing. They have to. If they don't bring like the costumes back, it's gonna be a problem. Like I understand, they're they're not well, gonna be able to bring back all the costumes. But like, there's gonna be some licensed material that they may not be able to touch. Yeah. But like, I remember, like for example, like they had Spider Man in one of them, and I know uh, that. I think I want to say it was two. You could play Spider Man. I that one I don't remember ever getting. Um, but from when I was looking at the, at the trailer for it, um, I did see that for example, the clothing style, while it's still going to be the same color scheme, I guess, because you're able to, you know, high definitioning it, um, instead of like, uh, tank tops, it might be like a, a shirt, um, a red shirt and whatnot. Uh, the book bags are going to look a little bit different from one of the characters but overall it's still a really good overhaul from the original i mean it's not even an overhaul man like i'm, I'm dying to see it like it, it just looks it's, so... it is an overhaul because if you're talking about their remastering into more of an hd look i mean they... no, but my thing is like i feel like it's even more like because when you say overhaul like it just it makes it seem like it's just like like on the outset like i feel like it, they did a lot more work than they're getting credit for you know what i mean like oh I yeah like, definitely that's what i'm trying to say like i'm not trying to say that you're wrong in the sense that yeah they did overhaul they i'm did, wrong did, i'm right i feel like it's just like an understatement you know what i mean to to the level that it looks like it's going to be coming out to yeah oh man <clears throat> this ah. so weird um, <laughs> losing that is what is so great about this game. <laughs> oh, I came in second place. So I'm good. Along with you, we both came in second place. Eh, you know it happens. No. Um. Yeah. No. It's it's still a fun game. Um. I wonder. I want to see like all the fun Easter eggs, so all the all the hidden um secrets that the game used to have. I want to see what they're going to do for the online multiplayer. We know they're doing the split screen. Yep, they I are. I want to see how they're going to do the multiplayer. That's going to be awesome. And um, the best part, they're actually bringing back the uh, Create a Skate uh, Park. So you're actually going to be able to make your own skate park like you used to. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, so like the whole like you know Mario Builder type aspect is back. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you're going to be able to share those, and I would assume you'll be able to play those online. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I should be able to create my park and then, like, invite you to come over and, you know, skate it. Which that, be that is actually a good question, um, now that you mention it. What? Um, if we're going to be able to actually, like, you know... Play be able to invite, park. yeah, play in each other's park. Um, because like, that the was the point of having to create a park if you can't, you know, like you, you had. You well, it was more of a local co op thing back in the day while you were able to play, you know, the creative park, but it was more local, not online. So, yes, yeah, it is going to be an interesting so like, twist now, yeah. but like, you, you can't, like. Like, you can't have online aspects and then, like, think that nope, that people are going to be okay with not sharing the creative part feature. You know what I mean? Like, at that point, that, that, that has to be included. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see. <clears throat> the other announcement that they had that was pretty cool, they announced the new Paper Mario. Oh, I know. I saw that. Yeah. 
I, I I'm not a huge well not because I have you know not because I think it's a bad series just I've never actually played them but I it does look pretty good man I love the original Paper Mario did you actually play them I know yes like, um my 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 sister uh, Jen plays them and she loves them but uh, aside from that. I've watched her play it, but I don't. I had never really had. They look really interesting, and and you know, never really been my beat. But oh, come on, they keep falling. <sighs> but at the same time, it it is nice to see a new Paper Mario game. Yeah, no, I'm excited. Um, uh, that that one is actually out. probably going to be one of the Paper Mario games that I do get. Um, I currently do have Paper Mario. Stick of stars or something like that, or stickers. The sticker <laughs> one <laughs> for uh, it's. Do I have it for the switch? Yeah, I think I have it for the switch. Um, but yeah, it's. I'm not. I like Mario games, but I'm not into Mario games that much. Um, except for like the original ones. Um from way back in the day from the Super Nintendo and then um the oh what was it the 64 and 64 versions mm-hmm. um those were my favorite ones uh then then the new Mario Kart and all that stuff to me is kind of stale for some reason and the new I have never played Galaxy so I can't speak to that one but the newer games for Mario's, I don't know. To me, it doesn't give me the same feeling like the original ones did. Why not? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I I just don't get that tickle from the newer <laughs> ones. Fair enough. I don't know. I am personally still just waiting for them to announce Mario Sunshine. I'm still that. That's all I care about right now is the fact that there's a rumor for Mario Sunshine, and I really, really, really want that rumor to happen. I mean, nobody expected Paper Mario. Paper Mario, I feel, came out of nowhere. So it'll be it'll be nice to see. Yeah. I'm excited. I can't wait! <laughs> Dude, did you also see the other thing that I, don't, I wanted to talk about? I don't know if you saw the, the video tech demo. The yes, tech demo. I saw it. Okay, so for anybody who hasn't seen it, um, Unreal Engine 5 has been announced. Freaking gorgeous. That that trailer, first of all, let, let's, let's just discuss the trailer in and of itself and how beautiful that looked. I'm sad that they basically said that it is not a game. Uh, it is apparently a, a playable tech demo that they were trying or they were hoping to show off to the public. At a, I want, I believe it was GDC. They were trying to show it off, um, but of course, with everything that's going on with Corona, that's not going to happen. Um, uh, so, what they did is, of course, they just went ahead and released the, the announcement video, uh, and it looks gorgeous. The quality that they showed is amazing. They showed off basically two things. Uh, that was the primary systems that you know they've improved on for anybody who's. Uh, who knows? Unreal Engine is, is, you know, it's an engine built that the middle of it. It's an engine built used to build games, um, games like Fortnite, and you know, there's been a whole mess of other games that have been built on that engine. Uh, it's used for third parties. It's licensed out. It's used across platforms. Uh, so this is coming across multiple platforms, but it was shown off on a PlayStation 5, which also gave me like a lot of joy because oh my god, that looked beautiful. They really did. Dude, the level of detail on that was amazing. Yeah, and they uh, were talking about that, for example, um, there was a scene that they were showing off at the very beginning. It was like rock work. And what they were talking about is that the rock work, it's not like an animated um, rock work for like you normally are you seeing in a, in a video game. But it's the cinematic version that they're able to actually keep in the real game. That's how powerful yep. this engine is going to be. And that is freaking awesome. I mean, they were talking about the number of freaking triangles. There was at one point they had 500 statues where each statue had 33 million triangles. So there were a total of 16 billion triangles within the scene. 
Like yep. how insane is that? Um, and that's oh, – it, it was just beautiful. Uh, apparently like the, one of the technologies they showed was the nanite technology. They showed that off with that those statues to show the amount of level of detail. They showed it off with Lumin, um, lumina, luminous and so loop, loop. Uh, I that's, forgot the word of it. That, that's the next one. But like the the nanite technology is basically like they can control down to the pixel. It seems and like that's yep. the level of detail that you know they're being able to manipulate. Well, yeah, because uh, some of the triangles um design that creates the images can actually be as small as a pixel. Yep. So like that, that's as little as they're able to get. So imagine the level of detail that they're you would be able to create with that. And, and then on a top 4K of that, TV. And then on top of that, they also have it that you can. Oh, that was a that was an interesting pause. All right, <laughs> good game. <clears throat> um. But yeah, and they also had the other system, which is the one that you were talking about, the Lumen system. Mm -hmm. That's the lighting system, which looked amazing. From a development perspective, it almost looked like, and again, I'm not a developer, so please don't shoot me. It almost made it look like it, it's going to make a lot of things a lot simpler. And like they kind of made it look like, oh, you want good lighting? Like It's cool. All you have to do is move this light, and it'll do it for you. Um, I don't know how you know true or how how much in depth that system works, but like it looked to be awesome. I mean, from from a consumer perspective, it, it seems like an awesome tool. But from like an oh my god, look at the level of detail perspective, like oh my god, look at the level level of detail. Mm -hmm. No, and a lot of the the what they showed off on that tech demo was a lot of items were actually created in a four I mean um, I'm sorry not 4K 8K um environment and they were able to you know translate that in still into the game which it's freaking awesome especially if they're going to be able to bring games to be 4K you know mm -hmm. that we kind of want for this generation so well, I mean the engine looks like it has the capability of doing it, so we'll see. Oh yeah, it, it a thousand percent does. But just look at the engine, and and look at the type of um, game that they demoed, and then like imagine a new Uncharted, imagine a new Tomb Raider. Oh God, yes. Like, imagine, you know, I would say imagine Fortnite, but they're never going to use that. <laughs> Ironically enough, they're never going to use their amazing engine to its full capacity with Fortnite. There's no need. No. Like, Fortnite is just a cash cow for them. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, no, I'm excited, you know, what the future has to bring in if the PlayStation has that much power, you know, to be able to it push. Actually, it Exactly. That's kind of where, like, it actually seems like it might be able to compete. Mm-hmm. I'm excited yeah. for this generation. I can't wait. <laughs> I really cannot wait. We still don't have a price point. That's, that's, isn't no. it, like, to me, it's still concerning, man. Yeah, no, we don't have a price point. Um, let's see if we hear something, because I know that PlayStation, um, I was reading an article today, I, um, that it talks about PlayStation has announced that they're going to come out with a, with a really good list of third-party and first-party games that are coming out for the PlayStation 5. Um, and there is currently rumors that it might be at the beginning of June. Really? The listing yeah. in terms of the, the games that are coming? or the Yes, listing yeah, apparently it's a hefty list of games. <clears throat> um, and they're saying that it's going to be a really good list of games, both from third-party and first-party titles. So, uh, yeah, we'll see when they will announce that. But the rumor currently that I saw was that it was going to be towards the beginning of June. No actual date. But again, that is just a rumor. I mean, speaking of rumors too, like the, we had one in, you know, that I wanted to discuss where it seems like a job posting came, was found in a Japanese listing or something where it indicated that the PS5 could potentially be launching in October. Um, what do you think about the date? Because like, take all this COVID and everything into consideration. Do you think that an October release date would be feasible? Like, 
I wouldn't put it past them to want to be in people's homes by the end of October, beginning of November. But do you think it's possible? Um, to be honest, anything is possible. It just really depends on how far they are in development. Um, do I think they might do it in October? Probably not. Um, I still think they're going to go more for uh, the holidays because that's when you're going to get your uptick. But if you do release in October, you're basically going to have first dibs, you know, out into the public, you know, to go with PlayStation, you know, so who knows? Uh, it to be interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking closer to November, um, myself. But it would be nice, but the thing is, and the problem with the, you know, having any sort of credence to that rumor is the fact that we are already in May, and we know barely nothing Mm -hmm. about the PlayStation 5. We don't know the price point, we know what the remote, we know what the remotes look like, um, very indicative of, you know, how the PlayStation 4 sounds. Dude, did you see Uh, that concept remote? (laughs) So I saw the concept remote, and it looks awesome, with the exception of the the fact that it would kill your battery. Oh like yeah, half an hour, but but just think of the possibilities. It would be pretty sweet, but the thing is, at that point too, what what would you offer people to put as those those buttons? Well, the um the way that it was shown in that little the uh, demo was more of your menu buttons um so for example with the fortnite image it was you know being able to change your weapons to the ones that you wanted change to the type of building material you wanted um so items like that you know changing your weapon category you'll probably have i don't know uh, something some shortcuts honestly This guy's just like tearing people to help part. Like, jeez. Oh, I'm getting my butt wet. So Everybody's sometimes I, I'm, I'm, I'm sometimes dominant. I'm even I'm losing my. Ah, I took down his streak. Not really. Yeah. Now watch me die within thirty seconds. <laughs> I can tell you, man, I'd, I'd hate that I'd... <sighs> Brawlhalla is one of those games that I loved for a while, and I used to play it religiously for a while, and I got very decent at it for a while, and then I stopped playing. But... It's still a game that I find a lot of fun. Uh, no, this is my first time playing. I mean, it's not bad. Um... So what do you think, so far? Honest it's... Opinion. Uh, honest opinion is a whole lot easier than freaking Smash Bros. Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> that is my one hundred percent honest of, opinion. That's kind of what it's like. It's kind of like Smash Brothers. It's just with a whole mess of characters that you don't know <laughs> unless you yeah. wanna. Well, the cool thing is like they do have like you can uh, buy characters, so you can potentially get other people and you know what they do is they have free characters that rotate um that you can use for free within x amount of time um so you're able to use these like for example seven characters during this week uh until this is over and then at that point uh you can only use you know this next new set uh, however, if you do buy characters, you do get to keep them, and then you're able to like basically use those legends whenever. So it's kind of, um, not legends, use those characters whenever. Uh, it is very much like League of Legends, where you know that that's kind of a similar model. You get to kind of play with the the heroes for free for a while, and then if you want a particular one that you like, you buy that one, and that's that's you know the one that you keep. Yeah. So okay. So PS5. PlayStation Studios. Did you see anything? Did, did you see that? No. All right. So PlayStation announced that their first party studios are now going to be branded uh, PlayStation Studios. 
they have a new logo. They have this new like graphic uh, as well that's going to play in the beginning of games uh, to let everybody know that, uh, and I quote, uh, it, they're a symbol of quality. So you know the quality that you get. Uh, but it is going to apply to first-party uh, PlayStation games. Uh, it's not going to be assigned to The Last of Us because of when The Last of Us 2 is going to be coming out. Yeah. Uh, and I think they're missing the deadline for another game. But we're, we are going to be able to start seeing them um, in the next coming months uh, with the logo plastered on top of the first parties. What do you think of this move? Does it tell you anything? Do you think that they're trying to plan anything? Uh, part of me is hoping that in doing things like this, uh, it'll it'll lead to more of a Game Pass sort of scenario where, you know, this is the first-party PlayStation games. These are PlayStation exclusives, you know, uh, sort of ordeal, and they're now part of the PlayStation Plus or PlayStation Now subscription, you know? Yeah. That would be pretty cool. I wish they would go in that route. Sadly, uh, we know that that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> You never know, man. It's PlayStation. They can do anything. That's, they can, but it's one of those where I have a feeling that they won't. Uh, I would be interested to see, and, and I I hate the fact that there hasn't been any information so far about it. Uh, that well, People haven't really brought it up. There's really what? haven't been much information about both the PlayStation or Xbox. The only difference is with the played. Xbox is that you know we have seen the console. But we really haven't seen the Xbox truly in action. You know, I've looked for videos, and a lot of the videos that I see is just a breakdown of the hardware that's inside. But that's about it. Like, I physically have, except for today, because today is when I saw the tech demo being played on the PlayStation 5. That's the only thing that I've seen kind of concrete, because the one video that we kind of saw for... um. Oh yeah, that's right. For the for the Xbox um thing was the uh, what the heck is the name the samurai game? Uh, uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. Yep. Then you know I, I got to see a little bit of what it does um but and its power, which, but I I can't wait for Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> the problem is is that I am concerned about getting Ghost of Tsushima for the PlayStation 4 only because I feel like it's going to be very much um, better on PlayStation 5. <laughs> and I just I just have a, this, I have this weird feeling so far, which I hope they do because they, they need to. Um, I hope they have some sort of like scenario like the smart delivery that Xbox has announced where, you know, developers can... Uh, just go ahead and basically make, you know, whatever. Like, for example, like when you buy Cyberpunk 2077 uh, for the Xbox One X, you're going to get it for the Xbox Series X as well. Mm-hmm. You know? So that that's kind of what I'm hoping PlayStation does. Um, but with them not being part of E3 this year and with E3 being dead, uh, period, I'd be interested to see how we're going to get that information, if we're going to get that information, what they're going to do. Yeah, no. Um, we'll see. PlayStation has a long way to go. Um, hopefully, they do have something like that smart delivery because that would be freaking awesome. Um, because that would be something you know, if you want to get that specific game into your PlayStation Four, you'll be able to bring it over to PlayStation Five. Um, now, overall, the game so far is the way that they've shown them. They look like they're going to be beautiful, capable games. But the, I feel like there's a but. It's just gonna boil down to you know how good are gonna be the game story modes and all that stuff you know on the actual developer side. So hopefully they go the Nintendo way and truly QA their games to well, a high degree. Kind of, ironically enough, the way that you said that, that's exactly what it reminded me of. The way that they worded it reminded me of. Like, this is the PlayStation seal of approval. You know what I mean? And it just reminded me of the Nintendo seal of approval that you see all the time. Um, and I wonder if that's what they're trying to get at. I wonder if that's where it's coming I hope. From. I really do hope. 
Um, because, yeah, while well, PlayStation does have really good games and Xbox has some really good games, sometimes quality, you know, of those games have been, you know, not there for the most part. And that's the part that sucks with a lot of this new generation game, so-called AAA titles, where we're coming into... It's getting to the point where we're getting too used to it's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm expecting the game to be buggy. I'm expecting the game to be broken. And, you know, and that is something for this generation that I hope, you know, we can have our minds at ease and not worry about that. And just focus like, you know, this game has awesome visuals. This game actually plays like it's supposed to be. You know, you have the power behind it to actually show us what you truly wanted to show us, you know, through your video games. And it just jumped off the map because I got my character confused. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem I, I, with Brawlhalla. The only real problem with Brawlhalla. I'm sure I can find more problems, but still. You know I'm, what I mean. I'm loving this character so far. You'll eventually find a character you like, and that'll be the one that you stick to the most. Yeah, I'm so far, I think I found her. But, yeah. So, Ghost of Tsushima, what, what did you think about that? Are you getting it? Because it remind- I'm it, getting it, but go ahead, go ahead, finish that thought, go ahead. It reminded me a lot um, of Far Cry. Okay. In um, the first thing that I thought of, and the reason why I was like, oh man, I wonder if he's thought the same. I was like, oh my god, I'm glad we're finally getting that Assassin's Creed set in Japan that we wanted. <laughs> no, I haven't played Assassin's Creed in a long time. I've never really been a big fan of Assassin's Creed. Um, but I've played a lot of Far Cry's, and the map style, the menu style... Oh, a, no, 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 no. A lot of, a lot of it reminded me. I was of dominating, Far Cry. man. Except that I'm a samurai. Yeah, I was the first thing that came out of my mouth was, oh my god, we're finally getting that Assassin's Creed game. <laughs> you know what? I've never used this character, but this girl may be my girl. Like, oh my god. Oh, really? Dude, I'm do- I've dominated almost twice right now. What's up? Oh, somebody disconnected. What? Sore loser. Anyway, so yeah, dude, I'm very much looking forward to it. It, it looks awesome. Um, I love the fact that they have different filters, and you could play the game. Oh as, yeah, it's like an old school uh, Japanese film. Um, I wonder if they're gonna do the la- the bad lip syncing as well. Because <laughs> that would. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I won this one. What? Second place, baby. <clears throat> I'm getting warmed up. All right. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it's a beautiful game. The scenery looks amazing. Um, I'm very, very surprised with how much they, they paid attention to, uh, like, the visual aspects and the photo mode. Like, oh, my. Did you see that photo mode? Oh, uh, yes. The, all the different um, costumes that you can change to and all that stuff. No, it does look like they put a lot of detail work behind it. And one of the things that they described it is you're going to be able to progress through this game just like you want to progress. You're going to be in charge of developing this character in a different way where my experience of the way that I level up my character and go through the stories it's going to be completely different than the way that you do it. You know, you're going to be able to represent um, your character by how you customize it, what kind of items you put on your, you know, boosters you put on them. So they're, they're putting a lot of thought behind the game. So we'll see. Yeah, man, it, it's, it's going to be interesting. I love the fact that it's they they kind of made it seem like with the exception of a tutorial you're going to be able to do whatever you want in terms of whether you're going to play as a um how do you call it whether you're going to play as a samurai or whether you're going to play as a ghost uh is what yeah. they, they refer to it as the in the game yep because the samurai style it's more of a traditional honorable fighting style versus the ghost style is you're just doing anything you can yeah you're stuff done son 
Mm hmm Using traps and whatnot, it don't matter. Traps, deceive, whatever you need. Ah, don't die. Wait, where am I? Ooh, I actually jumped off the map yeah. because there's... Ah, I, I don't like it when there's two characters that are the same, like, character. Ooh, That's the... Damn, you know, double... I got a double knockout. Uh, all right, Team Rocket. <laughs> so, yeah. So, are you getting Ghost of Tsushima? Debating it? Not really? Um, This year, I want to try to get as many games as possible. Um, Ghost of Tsushima, will, it's definitely looking like one of the games that may make it into my list. Or into my actual library of games. I, I gotta pay attention to what the release date for that one was. Uh, did they give a release date for Ghost? Okay. Ah, uh, honestly, I do, I do not remember. Fair. All right. That pretty much kind of covers it for what we wanted to discuss this week. No, it does. You hit? Yeah, man. See, we, um, we actually we had an episode. So yeah, to <laughs> told you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I try to be media dark sometimes, and at times it's like, damn, I can't do that, really. <laughs> well, there's been so much going on that you kind of, like, I think a lot of people are trying to be a little bit media silent to an extent, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. the exception of, you know, a few things, I'm, I'm trying to kind of stay as away from the majority of stuff as possible, just because it's it's all gloom and doom, and everything is negative, and... You know, like, we need to know what's going on, but at the same time, you know, kind of well, need a break, so. Driving theaters are going to, are doing a comeback. <laughs> Dude, if we haven't, if you haven't done so already, please go check out the episode of Control C where we discussed. The <laughs> <impact> <laughs> of uh, see, I do plug all my shows on every other show. <laughs> Um, but yeah, dude, we, we, we discussed that and yeah, it's, it's interesting, man. And then you want to know what's even more interesting. I don't know if you saw that one. Amazon has bought, is buying stakes in, uh, AMC. Oh, really? Oh yeah. Well, for oh, those, yeah. and for those that didn't know, Amazon has a game releasing on release day of this episode, oh my God, the 20th. Man. Right, I forgot. Which, They're releasing the first game. Yep, which it actually has been delayed twice. One, whenever they started going to work from home, and then two, learning the curve of actually working from home. <laughs> <laughs> no man. But uh, um, I haven't really looked much into the game. I do see a lot of um people talking about is it still. Are they a little too late coming on board um, with the games? Uh, are they really? Like, this is the first game. There's no need to like rush, honestly. Like, I think what needs to happen and or what needed to happen, we'll see how, <laughs> how it pans out for them. Um, but they needed to focus on getting a good game as opposed to getting a game out. Yep. So, yeah, delay it by all means and then come out and give out a good game, something that you know people are going to care about especially during this time of COVID where like, I mean, how many people have not been playing animal crossing? You know what I mean? Not me. Why are they playing? Well, <laughs> they <tricky. laughs> Hey, you <clears> asked, <throat> I lost my character for a second. Um, uh, you stole my but for the most part, like, uh, uh, animal crossing has been selling like crazy because everybody's been home. You know what I mean? There's everybody's kind of needed something to play. So, that um, you would think would hopefully help. And I'm getting my butt whipped and I lost my train of thought. I apologize. So <laughs> we You're always getting your butt whipped. Yeah, I'm getting my butt whipped a lot today. It's, it's hard to try to host an episode and play a fighting game. <laughs> That's why we want to do Street of Rage hopefully soon. Soon, but for some reason, I keep having issues with Street of Rage. I don't. This is, and we were discussing this. This is why I don't usually PC game. It's because it's a hassle. Man, you're just racist. I'm just what? You're just racist against Street of Rage. 
but I'm not racist against Street of Rage. I want to play Street of Rage. I got super excited that Street of Rage came out. I know. I was excited, too. I haven't played it. The other game that I want to play is freaking Gears Tactic. I have it downloaded and everything, and I have not been able to play it. Well, why not? I just haven't had the time, to be honest. Like, even, yes, even though I'm home, I've actually been doing a lot of projects around the house that just kind of needed to be done. And this is technically the time that I've been able to have to actually focus on some of the stuff and yeah. actually accomplish a lot. <laughs> well, that's good, man. At least you've got a lot accomplished. It's It's been helpful for that regard. Oh, yes. So, no, but I, I have Gears Tactics on my library. I have Street of Rage 4. I have, um, what is the other one? Um... I have the new uh, Minecraft dungeon that's coming out. Oh, yep, man. I have that one uh, ready to pre-install. Yep, same. I'm just waiting for it to release to try it out. But I'm excited about it. Oh, I must survive. Oh, man. I must survive. I must survive. <laughs> hey, or I will hey. survive. Oh, Lord. All right, Ricky, so before we sign off this episode, <laughs> anything you want to recommend, anything you want to put out there? I recommend our show. <laughs> Give us a five-star rating, even if we're horrible, because five stars is what gives us the notifications, letting us know that we were just horrible. And <laughs> if you like us, you know, five times works well as well. Yeah. You can follow us on social media at Geek and Cast. You can follow me at Vizen. You can follow Ricky at Big Gamer Dad. Uh, and yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll go ahead and sign off this episode. Yeah, guys, I'm going to check that control C again. Go check it out. Go check out our webpage at geekandcast.com. Uh, and yeah, thank you, Ricky, for joining us. I almost started doing the control C exit. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you, thank you to our host for joining us, uh, Ricky. Yeah, thank you. I, I rate this game, uh, five claps. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We do need a rating from you, or, or, or at the very least, either a recommendation or not. What do you think of Brawlhalla? Uh, I like it. It's like I mentioned before, it's a whole lot easier learning curve than Smash Bros. Um, mm-hmm. It's fun. Um, I don't want to say it's mindless, but it's, excuse me, whew, but it's one of those games that it is pretty mindless where I can still talk and pay attention and have a conversation and still play it. And for this example, still come out in first place somehow. Yep. <laughs> so anything is possible in video games. Oh, Lord. That was, a, <laughs> that was amazing song. Amazing song. Right All right. Well, with that, I'll, I'll go ahead and take that as my segue out of this. So thank you, everybody, for joining us on this episode of Chairside Gaming. Remember that Chairside Gaming goes live uh, bi-monthly. So go check us out. Um Check out also, again, Geek and Cast. Check out Control C. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. We'll catch you on the next episode. Luego.